Hey there folks, Tower Tech here. Today we're taking a look at how you can create custom braided cables yourself. This video is gonna be split into parts and there will be links to those parts down in the description. If you're anything like me, you will need to rewatch some of these sections a number of times and it will save you scrubbing through the whole video. So let's start off with the things that you need. You're gonna need a decent set of tools. Now I do recommend you don't scrimp on the purchase of these tools. The quality of what you deliver at the end is gonna be highly dependent on them. You're going to need wire cutters and you're going to need a crimper for DuPont pins. The crimper that I bought comes from MDPC and has been hand filed down to the exact size for these particular pins and makes the crimping process really straightforward. If you're dealing with split wires then you're going to need a soldering iron as well and you're also going to need a lighter for using on your shrink wrap. You're going to need some 18 gauge multi-threaded wire the DuPont pins themselves, you'll only need female pins if you're making cables that run all the way from your power supply all the way to your motherboard or your graphics cards. If you're creating extensions, you will need male DuPont pins also so that you can connect that extension into the existing wires. You're gonna need some ATX connectors or plugs. These come in different shapes and sizes. And the ones that you need are largely going to be dependent on the particular type of brand and model of power supply. You're going to need some sharp wire cutters. I recommend one for the wire and one for the sleeving. The ones that you use on the wire will blunten over time. And if you use those on the sleeving, you're not going to get that nice clean cut. You're going to need some good quality sleeving. Again, I got mine from MDPC, which is much better quality than the prefabricated sleeved cables that I've bought previously. You'll need an ATX pin remover. You'll almost certainly need to take some pins out at some point. And optionally, you can go for a flameless torch. I have to say I did find the lighter much more effective in the process. So to start off, we need to measure all of our wire. I used a steel ruler to do this and I made my wires about 60 centimeters long. Now I only had a 30 centimeter ruler, so I used my snips just to scratch on the insulation at the end of the ruler so that I could then pull the wire back and then start to measure again. The inside wires should be about 15 to 20 centimeters shorter than your outside wires so that when you've completed your cable, you get a nice natural curve in it. Strip off about three millimeters off the end of the wires, and then you need to pre-crimp your DuPont pins. To do this, put them inside the crimper with the long wings facing towards the heart shape on the top jaw. You need to crimp down until you hear three clicks, and then you need to release the crimp using the mechanism within the handle. You then need to insert your wire into the pin, making sure that the long wings are covering the insulation and that the short wings are covering the multi-threaded wire that's come out from where you've stripped the cable. Then return the pin to the crimper and crimp it all the way down, making sure that the pin is orientated the same way as when you did the pre-crimp. A good crimp has the long wings biting into the insulation but not piercing it, and has the short wings biting down over all of the threads coming out of the stripped cable. You then need to prepare your second pin by pre-crimping, again three clicks on the crimper. You then need to lay the cable flat on your bench with the pin that's already attached facing up. You then need to trace your fingers down the cable to make sure that when you attach the second pin, it's orientated in the same way. Repeat the crimping process and attach the second pin. You're now ready to put your sleeving on the cable, which you need to measure out. The ends of the sleeving should come at each end between the long wings and the short wings of the pin. Make sure when you measure out the cable that you don't stretch it, that's quite easy to do. I found a pinch and trace down very gently was the easiest way for me. You need to melt the ends of your sleeving before you put it on the cable to stop it fraying. To do this, use a lighter. Make sure that the sleeving is close to the flame but not actually touching it. The second that you start to see the sleeving melt, quickly feather it down, being careful to make sure that you don't pinch the sleeving together, otherwise you won't actually be able to get the cable through it. 
You then need to insert your cable into your sleeving, and if your pin gets caught inside the sleeving, you can bunch the cable up and then pinch down on the pin to edge it forward and get that cable inside the sleeving. You then actually need to bond the cable to the sleeve. We're gonna use something called the heat shrinkless method, which is slightly counterintuitive because you actually use heat shrink. The reason it's called the heat shrinkless method is because it's the actual sleeving that melts and bonds to the cable. The way in which you do this is to put your heat shrink over your sleeving, have it overhanging by about two or three millimeters, making sure that your the end of your sleeving is still lined up between the long and short wings of your pin. Once you've got that in place, apply your lighter, making sure that the tip of the flame actually touches the heat shrink, and then rotate the cable round, making sure you get a full 360 degree coverage for about eight or nine seconds. Once you've done this, quickly, cut the heat shrink and pull it off, and you should find that your sleeving has actually bonded to the wire, creating a permanent connection. A quick tug on it to make sure it's secure, then go to the other end and repeat. You now need to insert your pins into your ATX connectors. To do this, make sure the pins are orientated in the right way. The side of the pin that has the wires clamped down should face the same direction as the clip on the top of your ATX connector. Push the cable all the way in until you hear two faint clicks. These are the wings of the pin actually clipping into the connector which will prevent the cable from pulling out. Now repeat this for all of the other cables, that's 23 more cables in the case of a motherboard PSU connector. Remembering to make sure that the inside cables are shorter than the outside cables so that you get that nice curvature. Please, please make sure that you understand the wiring diagram for your PSU. They are different by make and model. And I actually used a multimeter with a jumped PSU and I checked every individual pin before I actually connected it onto my motherboard to make sure that I had the right voltages there. It would be a very expensive mistake if you didn't. Now, if you've got a double wire going into your ATX connector, as I did in the instance of my Corsair power supply, the 18 gauge wire is gonna be far too thick to fit into that space. Notwithstanding that point, it's actually not gonna look nice and lay nicely and go through your cable cones. So it's much better to split the cable further down where it's actually gonna be tucked behind the back of your PC. In order to do this, you need a razor blade and you're gonna strip your wire with two 360 degree cuts and then a cut between them. This will allow you to remove the insulation, exposing the threads of the wire underneath. You can then twist these open and use a razor blade to split them apart, which will then allow you to take another wire that is the same length as where you've stripped that cable to the end of the wire to actually insert the threads of that. You then solder these together and then cover all of the cables with sleeving, making sure that you fully cover the solder joint and that the sleeving all touches against each other. Use your heat shrinkless method at the end of each of your cables and then cover that joint in the middle with heat shrink using a heat gun or a gas torch to shrink that shrink down. Cover it with another couple of layers, making sure that you shape it as you shrink it down and you'll end up with a nice, neat wire with a split in it. So there we go guys, a quick guide on how you create braided cables. It's a labour of love and it does take a long time, but there's nothing quite like a custom made set of cables that you can brag to your mates about. I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. If you're not already subscribed, please do so by bashing on this button here. Please like and share this video, and I'll see you in my next one.